motherfucker showed up. <laughs> hey guys, just for the purpose of your video here, I want you to go ahead and you can see these bolts inside here that we're going to be taking off. And then if you look on the outside, you keep outside ones as well. So it might be a little hard to see from the angle we're going to go at. So we got, we got four fasteners here and you can see the V-twin of our engine here. This is our front cylinder. This is our rear. And why that's important, I'm going to go ahead and just show the, the service manual here. If we can. Okay. You can see here labeled front cylinder, rear cylinder, even look at the shape of the cylinder heads. We have our two inside and our two outside. Here's the big thing. Notice how it says cylinder bolt removal. Okay. Alternatively loosen all four head bolts a quarter turn in the sequence shown. So I don't just go ahead and yank one out. What I'm trying to do is not distort the integrity of that flat ceiling surface on the head. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a marker real quick and mark those bolts so that I don't have to have any confusion or concern about that. Now go ahead and back the camera up. Another thing that you could do too is I'm laying the service manual in the same direction of the engine so that when I go ahead and mark these, <coughs> I'm not going to mix, mix up my left, right, and so on. So Simple step, but effective. Now I can go ahead and close up the manual. So I'm just knowing, I know that procedure exists. So I want to go ahead and make sure and, uh, and duplicate that. So now that those are marked here, I can go ahead and quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn. And just back and forth. Now it popped on that one, so I don't have to worry about it. These are on dowel pins, so I don't have to worry about it just falling off and falling on the bench. I'm just going to go ahead at this point. Another rag to throw under there, I'd love it. So you can see our dowel pins, we talked about that. You guys are going to be looking at, thanks guys, things that you hadn't seen necessarily before as far as with these head gaskets and whatnot, part numbers should have been facing up. It's something I like to go ahead and look at. We'll get a lot more detail uh, on the uh, installation procedures of what that looks like, okay? So at this point, I've got a couple specialty tools. All right, here's something that you're gonna see in your lab sheet that I ask you to do. We're, if you were just doing complete disassembly, you really wouldn't have to do this step, but I'll show you why it might be valuable here in a second. There's a cylinder hold down tool that's machined to go ahead and grab onto this you guys remember on your two strokes and some of the other four strokes you did that boy if you touch that crankshaft at all how the cylinder wants to <coughs> jump up on you and if a ring ends up popping out of that you're gonna break a ring and having a bad day all right hold on a second all right the reason I wanted to show you this is go ahead and turn the motor over all right. now what we get to do now tap 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 go ahead and you can actually see that top dead center and this is a time where very rarely, but once in a while, I've ran into the fact that one cylinder is significantly lower than another. And that's where somebody either didn't machine something right, and that would dramatically change compression ratios. And maybe when you did your first compression test, you saw they were way out of line. That could have been the problem. So what I could do is go ahead and do the rear. You want to turn the motor over? Here, watch these two pistons operate. Chugga, 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 boom, boom. All right, there's your V-twin at work. 